Hello and welcome back to Pony Tales, the YouTube show on which I read My Little Pony Friendship is Magic fan fictions. My name is Scribbler, and today we have Love in All Its Forms by Obolescence. It is labelled as Sadfic, and the summary reads The depths of Luna's loneliness drive her to create a creature that never should have been. But the nature of her companion, and the dark methods used to create it, may lead Celestia to commit an unforgivable deed of her own. The doors to Luna's chambers had always been an imposing affair. Enormous twin slabs of ebony, set with a hundred silver stars and a glittering crystal moon at their centre. No one knew for certain what went on behind those doors, and if there was any truth to the rumours that were roaming the halls of Canterlot Castle, no one wanted to. The lesser nobles had learned to stay well clear of the entire hallway, and the fearless royal guards were becoming reluctant to march past on their patrols. Even Her Royal Highness, Princess Celestia, paused at Luna's door, though not for quite the same reasons. The protection spells Luna had placed on them were powerful indeed, and it had taken her big sister a bit longer than she'd expected to break them. Celestia smiled in satisfaction as the last spell collapsed into smoke, finally allowing her to pry open the feared ebony doors. It was a breach of trust on her part, of course. What happened in Luna's chambers was none of her business, but trust only went so far. There were whispers now of what Princess Luna was doing, holed up in her chambers from dawn until dusk, emerging only to raise the moon. Gossip growing, breeding, multiplying. It was time now to lay those rumours to rest. She trusted Luna up to this point, but trust could only go so far. Her concern for Luna went further still. And she'd been right to worry, she realised, as she took her first steps into the blackness beyond the doors and found herself greeted by a sour smell like spoiled milk. Surely something was wrong, terribly wrong, for Luna's chambers to have turned so dank and dark and rotten. Luna, she called softly lighting her horn and taking a few more cautious steps forward. The soft golden light of her magic revealed a floor strewn with ancient, tattered books. Shelves of ingredients lined the walls, stocked with powdered newt, mandragora root, and bottles of something that glowed a sickening green. Celestia's nose wrinkled in disgust as she advanced and the smell of spoiled milk grew even stronger. Whatever Luna had been doing all this time, it seemed she'd been busy. Very busy. Luna! She called again, louder, sterner. Quietly, sister, I beg you, whispered a voice from the corner. You will wake her. Celestia stopped. Her? Luna, what have you been doing in here? You should not have entered my chambers without asking first, sister. Luna, lighting her own horn with her deep blue magic, stepped out from the shadows and smiled. But you are forgiven. It is good to see you. It had only been a week since Celestia had seen her little sister's face, and yet much had changed in it already. Her starry mane was blurred and fading around the edges, and dark half-moon circles were spreading out from beneath her eyes. She looked exhausted. No, worse than that, she looked sick. 
Luna? No, no, sister, said Luna, seeing the worry in Celestia's eyes. You need not fear. I am quite all right. She turned and, raising her hoof again to her lips, whispered, Come, there is something I wish to show you. Cautiously, Celestia followed her to the far corner of the room, where a pile of overstuffed pillows and silken blankets had been set up. I have toiled long and hard, whispered Luna, but I have finally succeeded. Succeeded in what? Celestia whispered back, eyes locked on the blankets, which slowly rose and fell like breathing. What is going on, Luna? What is this? This, said Luna, pulling back the covers, is all I have ever wanted. For a moment, Celestia didn't understand what she was seeing. It looked almost like a sleeping foal. Almost. Perhaps a foal taken and twisted by some grand evil power. Glossy, insectoid wings buzzed and hummed in time with gentle, sleepy snores. Hole-pocked hooves stretched out as it tossed and turned, and its shiny black carapace gleamed, reflecting the combined golden-blue light of the two sisters' magic. Instinctively, Celestia took a step backward. Is she not beautiful? asked Luna, beaming. She pointed to the jagged black horn that sprouted from its forehead and her smile widened even further. Magic and wings. I made her in our likeness. Celestia gasped, turning towards Luna in horror. You made this... this... thing? Her, Luna corrected. And yes, she is the fruit of all my efforts. Celestia shook her head, trying to overcome the shock of this news. Luna, she said, carefully smoothing the fear from her voice. You cannot simply create life. Nothing good can come of it. It isn't natural. And, more than that, it was dark magic. Fabricating a living, breathing animal from nothing required spells she'd thought long forgotten dangerous spells with wild and unpredictable results. Did Luna even realize what she'd just done? What she was getting into? There is no harm in her, Luna protested. I've only made a creature who can appreciate the night, as a pony loves the day. A subject of my very own. She sighed and gently stroked its stringy mane. Barely audible, she whispered. A daughter, even... You already have subjects, said Celestia. Subjects who love you already, more than that thing which is not your daughter ever can. You have not heard what I have heard. The rumors, the concern on our subjects' lips. They're worried for you. Worried for what I might do, you mean, Luna grumbled, placing the covers back over her creation. They have no interest in me otherwise. It was true, in some small way, though it pained Celestia to admit it. Rarely did anyone speak of Princess Luna except in hushed voices. Perhaps, she realized, for good reason. Can't it be both? she pleaded. Luna, whatever the problem is, this cannot be the answer. Get rid of it, now. How could I be so cruel? Luna asked, adjusting the pillows to better cradle the creature nestling on them. How could you be so cruel, sister, to look at something so small and innocent and tell me it does not deserve compassion? She looked up at Celestia, her with eyes wide and teary, and Celestia felt her resistance melt. Luna had always played the begging game better than she had. Please, sister, said Luna. She needs me. From beneath the pile of pillows and blankets, the creature stirred, as if he could sense its own danger. Slowly but surely, in great gasping wails, it began to cry. <coughs> Celestia could have refused, even so. Luna was on a dark path already, and keeping the creature she'd created could only make that path darker. 
it would be best, she reasoned, to end it now, to cut the rot off before it could spread. But no matter what her head said, her heart simply wasn't made of stone. She couldn't refuse her baby sister, not when she was so desperate for affection that she seemed on the verge of crying herself, just like her so-called daughter. Fine, Celestia said, defeated. Fine. You can keep it. Her. Oh, thank you, sister, said Luna, wiping away the tears forming on her eyes and giving her sister a grateful hug. I do not know what to say. Promise me, though, said Celestia, still clinging stubbornly to some shred of her better judgment, that it will not leave this room, not once, unless I allow it. Luna nodded. Yes, yes, of course. I promise you, sister. With that, Luna turned her attention towards soothing her crying creation, and Celestia walked out of the room. She felt somewhat better than she had walking in, she supposed. What she'd found hadn't been quite as bad as the absolute worst of her fears. And Luna had smiled. That hadn't happened in a long time, and Celestia had almost forgotten how much she missed her sister's wonderful grin. She only hoped, as the imposing black doors to Luna's chambers slammed shut behind her, that she had not also just made a terrible mistake. she could remember, Antumbra had lived within the confines of her mother's chambers. Not that she minded, it was a comfortable space, damp and dark and to her liking, and everything she could ever think to ask for, her mother provided. The only time she thought about the outside world at all were when her mother had to leave her, which was always horrible. Antumbra loved her mother very much, and she knew her mother loved her too. She knew because she could feel it a nourishing, glowing warmth, like a low flame, centred at her mother's heart. And no matter how long she basked in it, it never seemed to be enough. It was an awful thing to be cut off from that warmth, and to feel that gnawing, aching, starving need for affection creep over her once more. She hated it. Why must you leave, mother? Antumbra had asked one day, nestled safely in her mother's arms, and the glow of her love. And, as she always did, her mother replied, Because I must raise the moon every night, dearest. Why then can I not follow you? Because Aunt Celestia made me promise you would stay in this room, said her mother, hugging Aunt Umbra closer. And it is important to keep our promises. And to that, Aunt Umbra huffed, as she always did. She did not like Aunt Celestia. That tall, stern-eyed pony who always barged in unannounced, interrupting everything her mother was doing, whose heart always felt icy and cold, with no love meant for her. Who was this Aunt Celestia to tell her mother what she could and could not do? To always be there, standing in the way of Antumbra's time with her mother. She was tired of it. Why was her mother not tired also? I don't like Aunt Celestia very much, she harumphed. Do not say that, my sweet young Aunt Umbra, said her mother, playfully rustling her mane. She has only the best of intentions. I do not think so, said Aunt Umbra stubbornly. If she did, she'd let me go out with you and watch when you raised your beautiful moon. In truth, Aunt Umbra had never really seen the moon, except once or twice through the curtained windows of her mother's chambers. She didn't care for it nearly as much as her mother, but she knew her mother loved it most when she said things like that. The warmth radiating from her mother's heart grew just a little bit stronger, and Antumbra smiled, nestling her head into her mother's chest to get closer. Well, perhaps, said her mother, blushing slightly. Give it time, dearest. I'm sure Aunt Celestia will love you as much as I do soon enough. And when that happens, we can go out together as often as you wish. I promise. 
But why not now, if we both wish for it? Aunt Umbra pleaded, her wings whirring in agitation. She didn't want to wait, not when that aching hunger returned every time her mother left. Not when she'd never felt even a shred of warm love from this Aunt Celestia. Does she not love you? Of, of course she does, said her mother, tightening her grip ever so slightly on Aunt Umbra. And mixed in with the love, Aunt Umbra felt something else from her mother's heart. Something bright and scorching hot. Anger, perhaps. Where would you ever get such a silly idea? Then if she loves you, why will she not listen to you? Shh. Never you worry about that, dearest, said her mother, cradling Aunt Umbra and rocking her softly. I shall ask Aunt Celestia on the morrow, and we will see if something cannot be done. One way or another, you will see the moonrise yet. Thank you, mother, said Aunt Umbra, finally satisfied. I love you. And I love you, dearest. As a fresh surge of her mother's love embraced and enveloped her, Antumbra sighed in contentment and slowly drifted off to sleep. Welcome, welcome, sister, said Luna, closing the double doors to her chamber behind Celestia. We're so glad you could join us. Are we not, Aunt Umbra? We are, mother, said Aunt Umbra, nodding stiffly. It is good that you could visit us. It's my pleasure, Luna, said Celestia, turning towards her sister. The corners of her mouth twitched imperceptibly downward as she looked Luna over. You're looking... Well, as are you, sister, said Luna, giving her a tired smile. If she had noticed that her own coat was turning a sickly shade of light blue, or that her face was almost skeletally thin, she gave no sign of it. You seem as radiant as ever. A little sun never hurts, said Celestia teasingly. Perhaps if you left your chambers just a bit more often, not while my Antumbra needs me said Luna firmly. My visits outside must be kept short while she cannot follow me. Of course, Celestia murmured. She glanced in Antumbra's direction, noting its unblinking emerald eyes trained directly on her, quietly following her every move, not unlike a wolf studying its eventual prey. It is a shame that she cannot, Luna continued, for she is harmless as a rabbit, and twice as sweet. Why, just recently she... As I have told you a dozen times in as many days, said Celestia, cutting Luna off. And Tumbra will stay in your chambers until I am quite sure it, she, is safe to let loose in the castle. She glanced again at Aunt Tumbra. Those wolfish green eyes still watched her silently. No sign on its face that she'd said anything at all. And I am not yet convinced she is. Luna's face fell. As you wish, sister. Celestia could only hope her sister understood it wasn't a decision she made out of malice or spite. In fact, she almost wanted to let Antumbra loose, if only because it would allow Luna to stop barricading herself in her dungeon of a room and rejoin the world at large. But there was something off about Antumbra. Something she didn't quite like. Something she didn't want to let near her unsuspecting subjects. So long as that something was there, she was going to keep it locked up where she could keep an eye on it. Finally, Antumbra spoke up in that rasping, rusty metal voice of hers. Mother! Oh, but I almost forgot, said Luna her face suddenly brightening. Antumbra has something she wishes to show you. Celestia raised an eyebrow. 
does she now? She does, said Luna, clearly excited. Did you know, sister, that when I left my chambers to raise the moon not three nights ago, Cherry Blossom fled at the very sight of me? I had not heard of it, said Celestia, resolving quietly to have a discussion with Cherry Blossom after this. It was hard enough to convince Luna that her subjects were not starting to fear her, without their servants running away when she got too close. But go on. Luna beamed at Aunt Umbra. Go on, she said. Show Aunt Celestia your new trick, as we practiced. Yes, mother, said Aunt Umbra, closing its eyes in concentration. Its jagged horn began sparking with magic, and its black, shelled body was engulfed in crackling green flames. Reflexively, Celestia moved forward to stop Aunt Umbra, but she was stopped herself by Luna's hoof on her shoulder. Watch. In seconds, the flames subsided into flickering emerald embers, and with them, Antumbra seemed to have vanished. Standing in its place was a bright pink pony with a flower for a cutie mark, Cherry Blossom. No, Celestia corrected herself, not Cherry Blossom. Merely Antumbra in Cherry Blossom's form. I'm very sorry I ran away from you, Princess Luna, said Antumbra copying Cherry Blossom's quavery voice with uncanny accuracy. I always thought you were a g g great princess. Your apology is accepted, Miss Cherry Blossom. Luna purred, and your compliments likewise. Of, of course, Princess Luna, said Aunt Umbra, bowing. Then, if, if you have no further need of me, I shall take my... Leave. Luna clapped her hooves together with glee as the green flames engulfed Antumbra once more and she returned to her original form. Was that not wonderful? Luna asked. Is she not fantastic? Only because you taught me so well, Mother, said Antumbra modestly. Luna beamed and wrapped her arms around Antumbra. A little of both, then my precious little changeling. Celestia simply frowned, a pit forming in the center of her stomach. Is that what you're calling it now? She asked quietly. Her, said Luna, just as quietly. Her, Celestia conceded. Don't you think, though, that it would be better to go and speak with Cherry Blossom instead? The real Cherry Blossom? The real Cherry Blossom? asked Luna. She let go of Antumbra and turned to Celestia, eyes narrowed. What are you implying, sister? I think you should go to Cherry Blossom and talk to her, Luna, said Celestia candidly. The imitation is excellent, I'll admit, but you can't hole up in your room and pretend that Antumbra's act is as good to you as an actual thank you for your time, sister, said Luna, her tone cold and hard as ice. It was good that you could come to spare your time to come and see Antumbra's performance. I am sure that you are quite busy attending to your subjects. However, we shall detain you no longer. Her horn glowed and the doors to her chamber flew open. Perhaps we will meet again sometime soon. Oh, I'm sure we will, said Celestia. And without another word, she moved to leave, keenly aware of the flicker of triumph in Antumbra's eyes as she walked out. No sooner had the black double doors slammed shut behind her than she headed off to deliver orders to the royal guards. Antumbra had copied Cherry Blossom perfectly. Everything, right down to her voice, how could she have done that, Celestia wondered, if she'd been confined to Luna's chambers at all times? How, indeed. It was clear now that Luna would require a watchful eye of her own. Celestia had trusted her sister's judgment up to this point. She'd trusted her little sister not to let the bug-like monstrosity she'd created consume her. But her trust ended the moment Luna was willing to break a promise to her big sister 
for the sake of that creature she called a daughter. And if, in fact, it turned out that Antumbra was the seed from which Luna's sickness grew, Celestia would not hesitate to remove it, burn it, crush it, until it could never harm her sister again. For as much as Luna loved her daughter, Celestia would always love her sister even more. Though Antumbra had lived happily her entire life surrounded by walls, no roof she'd ever known could compare to the sky. An endless ocean of deep blue darkness, filled with twinkling, shining stars, just like her mother's mane. Her mother had told her once that even the nearest of the tiny pinpricks of light in the sky only seemed tiny because it was so far away. And if, somehow, Antumbra could ever fly far enough to reach it, She'd find it too big for her to comprehend. A million times the size of her mother's chambers. A billion. More. It was a very big world out there, Antumbra realised again. And seeing it always made her feel very small. You're not cold, are you, dearest? Asked her mother, feeling Antumbra shaking with awe. She draped a feathered wing over Antumbra, shielding her from the freezing wind that buffeted the balcony. Keep close to me. We shall stay warm together. Thank you, Mother, said Antumbra, smiling. She appreciated the gesture, though it hadn't been necessary. The offered wing was no help against the cold, but it was a sign of her mother's love, and the love itself was all Antumbra needed to feel warm and safe, even in a world so breathtakingly vast as the one beyond her mother's door. Sure that Antumbra was cosy beneath her wing, her mother sighed a tired sigh and looked up at the sky. It is time now to raise the moon, she said. Watch closely, dearest. And Tumbra watched, fascinated, as her mother closed her eyes and set her horn aglow. She looked out over the horizon and saw the full moon creeping upward, slowly rising to its rightful place as crown jewel of the sky. Its pure white glow was not quite as bright as she remembered it from last night, or the night before, but it still held a certain majesty that nothing else could hope to match. Or so Antumbra thought, anyway. It is gorgeous, Mother, said Antumbra, as the moon finally came to rest at the centre of the night sky. There is no sight that compares. Her mother laughed. A trifle, compared to what it could be. Dearest she said, yawning suddenly. I have not been at my best of late. I think it's lovely, even so, Antumbra insisted. And it was true. The moonrise had become the highlight of her nighttime jaunts with her mother. She had never paid attention to much before, when the moon had merely been just another object seen through her mother's window. But now, staring up from the balcony... Knowing her mother's moon was centerpiece to a sky so much bigger than she ever imagined. I am lucky to have you as my daughter, Antumbra, said her mother, bringing Antumbra closer still with her wing. She dropped her gaze from the sparkling night sky to the earth below, deathly quiet and dotted with darkened houses. If only every pony could see things as you do, she said sadly. But why? Don't they, Mother? Antumbra asked. How can they not when they see what I see? Her mother merely shook her head and smiled. You are growing fast, Antumbra, she said. But you are still young. Some day you shall understand that things are not quite so simple as that. Antumbra huffed, unsatisfied with that answer. It does not make sense to me, she grumbled. It does not make sense to me either, said her mother simply. For a short time, neither of them spoke, and the only sound on the balcony was the whistling of the wind around them. 
Then, suddenly, a voice called faintly from inside. Luna, are you still up there? Instantly, Antumbra froze, and so did her mother. They both knew that voice. Quickly, her mother hissed. The curtains, hide. With no time to say more, Antumbra sprang for the balcony's curtains and huddled behind them, keeping herself as small and still as she could. It was a flimsy excuse for a hiding place, but maybe, just maybe, Aunt Celestia would not notice her next to her mother. Maybe. She tensed as the gentle tapping of hoofsteps passed her by. Sheer panicked instinct told her that she had to run, to fly away from the danger as fast as her wings would take her. And Tumbra swallowed it down and placed a whole pocked hoof on her wings to keep them from buzzing on their own. She had to stay put. Her mother had ordered her to hide behind the curtains, and that was that. Good to see you again, Luna, came Aunt Celestia's voice, muffled slightly by the curtain. The guards told me you would be up here, but I thought you might have left by now. And why would that be? came her mother's voice, calm and even. And Tumbra wasn't fooled, though, and surely Aunt Celestia wouldn't be either. Even from her hiding place, Antumbra could sense her mother's overwhelming fear. No matter how well her mother tried to mask it, it was there, and Aunt Celestia would see it soon enough. Antumbra, of course, said Aunt Celestia. You aren't usually away from her for so long. I was curious. Antumbra is a growing fool, said her mother curtly. I am teaching her to handle herself without me. Of course said Aunt Celestia, sounding completely unconvinced. Antumbra's heart sank. Aunt Celestia had already guessed the truth. Surely her mother would realise, would try to end the conversation quickly. A particularly chilly breeze suddenly blew by, causing the curtains to flutter and forcing Antumbra to hold them close. She couldn't be revealed just yet, lest Aunt Celestia's suspicions be confirmed. "'Are you cold, Luna?' asked Aunt Celestia. You don't look well. I am f- fine, sister, spat her mother. No, I don't think you are, said Aunt Celestia. You're as pale as a ghost and thin as a rail. You simply don't look well, Luna, and I think I know why. I have b- business elsewhere, sister. Unless you- It's Antumbra, said Aunt Celestia. It's always been Antumbra. Ever since you made it, it's been feeding off you. I... I do not know what you're talking about, sister. And Tumber eats hay and oats, just as we do. From behind the curtains, and Tumber winced, guiltily recording the terrible, foul food she choked down daily to satisfy her mother. Food that had never seemed as wholesome or sustaining as her mother's own love. Look at the moon, Luna said Aunt Celestia calmly. It's dimmer than it's ever been. Be reasonable, Luna. Something is draining your magic. That something is Antumbra. Aunt Celestia's voice softened further, barely above a whisper, and Antumbra felt that familiar warmth again in the air. Love, but not meant for her. I'm telling you this... Because I don't want to see you get hurt, Luna. Get rid of Antumbra. Get rid of it now, before it can do any worse to you. Please. I... No, she... she wouldn't. Antumbra could stand it no longer. Aunt Celestia was manipulating her mother to her own ends, like a puppet on strings. And Antumbra would not allow anyone to treat her mother that way even if it meant revealing herself. She focused on her magic and took Cherry Blossom's form, hoping desperately that Aunt Celestia wouldn't see the puff of bright green fire through the curtain. Um, Princess Celestia, said Aunt Umbra, stepping out quietly from the curtains. One of the chancellors wishes to see you in the throne room of I- immediately... She felt two sets of eyes on her in Cherry Blossom's guise. 
Aunt Celestia's annoyed, her mother's relieved. Neither said anything. Aunt Tember coughed. Um, he told me it's urgent. Very well, said Aunt Celestia, giving her mother one last meaningful glance as she turned to leave. I will see what he wants. She stopped for a moment by the balcony doors, and just for a moment, Aunt Tumber could feel that ice-cold malice Aunt Celestia reserved only for her and her alone. You know, Cherry Blossom, she said softly, dangerously. I could have sworn you were on vacation today. And with that last parting shot, she walked off, leaving Antumbra alone again with her mother. Aunt Celestia knew. For certain now, if she'd only suspected before. And yet, Antumbra was not worried. Surely, if the worst came to pass, her mother would protect her from Aunt Celestia's wrath, just as she always had. No, what bothered her now more than anything else was something else Aunt Celestia had said. Mother, said Antumbra, still in Cherry Blossom's voice, it's not true, is it, that I feed? No, dearest, said her mother kindly, and love poured forth again from her heart instead of fear. Not at all. The cold breeze blew by again, and her mother shivered. Now, perhaps we should return to our chambers and rest, she said, covering Antumbra again with her wing. It has been a long night. Reluctantly, Antumbra nodded and followed her mother inside. Antumbra woke alone, not to the gentle radiance of her mother's love, but to the scorching heat of the sun above her head. She was not in her mother's bed, where she'd fallen asleep the night before, but instead surrounded by sand. Only sand, as far as the eye could see. "'You are awake,' said a voice behind her. "'Aunt Celestia's. Always Aunt Celestia's. Every time something went wrong.' "'Where... where am I?' Aunt Umbra asked, turning to face Aunt Celestia. "'Tell me!' She'd meant to sound demanding, strong and sure, like her mother, but instead it came out as more of a squeak. Aunt Celestia was twice as tall as she was, and surely a hundred times as powerful. Aunt Tumbra had never had the courage to face her before. Not on her own. Where was her mother to protect her, to shelter her and send Aunt Celestia away and tell her everything would be all right? And Tumbra didn't know, and that scared her more than anything else. You are hereby banished, Aunt Tumbra, said Aunt Celestia simply, looking down on Aunt Tumbra with no pity in her eyes and no love in her heart. It is your fate now to wander the wastelands forever, where you can do no harm to any pony, least of all my sister. Aunt Tumbra felt her chest tighten above the gnawing emptiness in her belly. Was it true? Had she been feeding off her mother, sapping her strength every moment they'd even been together? Was that why Aunt Celestia was banishing her? Because her mother... Her face flushed with shame. How could she even think such thoughts? Her mother had told her it wasn't true as recently as last night. It was Aunt Celestia again. Always Aunt Celestia. She was lying. Aunt Celestia had deceived her mother and banished her. But surely her mother would see the truth and save her soon. She was too wise and clever to be fooled for long. And Tumbra held on to that thought as the hollow, empty feeling of being away from her mother grew ever more intense. Even this is more than you deserve, said Aunt Celestia. She leaned in, close to Aunt Umbra. You hurt my sister, she hissed, her every word carrying a terrible power. You poisoned her mind and fed off the rot. I have destroyed nations for less. 
and I have spared you now, for her sake only. Thank her every day you continue to draw breath. And Tumbra trembled in fear, but silently. She held fast to that one thought, her rock against everything Aunt Celestia could do to her. Mother will save me. Mother will save me. Mother will save me. If you follow the sun, said Aunt Celestia, turning away from her, you will find shelter and water. She flapped her great white wings and rose into the sky. Do not try to follow me, she warned Antumbra, or what mercy I have will run dry. With that final remark, Aunt Celestia flew off, shrinking into the distance until she was only a tiny black dot in the infinite blue sky. Clinging to her one thought above all else, even her hatred for Aunt Celestia and the hunger gnawing in her stomach, and Tumbra began to walk. Doggedly, she put one hold hoof in front of the other, following the glaring yellow sun wherever it led her. She only had to reach shelter, she reasoned. Then she could hold out, survive even, instead of baking to death in the harsh light of the daytime sun. And then she would wait for as long as she had to. She was in a very big world now, and she was a very small changeling compared to it all. But even so, whatever else happened, Antumbra still trusted that her mother would find her. Luna's low, sad moans echoed from the darkness past her open doors. She's gone! Stolen! Stolen from me! Celestia stepped inside as quietly as she could. Luna? she asked softly. Luna lunged at her from out of the shadows. You! she roared. You took my daughter from me, sister! I did, said Celestia taking absolute care not to let her breaking heart show on her face. It was for your own... G Where is she? Return her! Luna demanded, fresh tears rolling down her pale, skeletal face. Now, sister, if you love me! Celestia looked at her sister, at limbs worn down to the bone, and a once blue mane that now looked almost bleached. She couldn't bear to say no to Luna but she could bear to refuse the snarling, savage wreck Antumbra had made her. I'm sorry, Luna. Antumbra's gone now. Luna howled and retreated back into the darkness of her room, sobbing all the while. Celestia didn't try to follow. Give it some time, Luna, she said soothingly. You'll see. You'll start feeling much better soon. And you'll soon realize, get out, came Luna's reply. You have hundreds of subjects you haven't spoken to in months, Luna. Was Antumbra so important to you that- Out, out sister! sister! Luna screamed, out, 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 out I out, never out, wish out, to see your face, your face again! again! And a wave of solid black magic hit her, catching Celestia completely by surprise. It threw her out from Luna's chambers and into the corridor, slamming the door shut behind her as she flew. Slowly, sadly, Celestia got to her hooves, winded by the blow, but otherwise unharmed. I'm sorry, Luna, she said. I shouldn't have let it come this far. She gave the ebony doors to Luna's chambers one final forlorn glance and sighed praying silently that she had not just made a terrible mistake.
That was Love in All Its Forms. It was written by Obolescence and read by Scribbler. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I have wanted to read this one for quite some time. It has been sitting in my list of um, potential ponytails. <laughs> uh, I love alliteration in my file naming. But unfortunately, because of the nature of some of the scenes, most notably the last one, I had to wait until the house was empty. Which, for some reason, nobody ever wanted to leave me alone in the house. Hmm. Um, but thankfully, now I've been able to do it. I hope people didn't think I was rather daft for shouting at the microphone. I get rather into reading these things. Um, hopefully people enjoy them. I haven't really much else to say about this other than thank you very much for reading. If you have any um, fics that you wish me to read that, you wouldn't like, that you'd like the scribbler treatment to, ha ha ha, um, then pop them in the comments or email me or PM me, however you wish to, to contact me. And send me a link and I'll see what I can do. Thank you very much. Be lovely to each other and good night, everybody.